retro surfboards have kind of come back into fashion in the recent years. They look cool, they, they look old, but they're still essentially a new board. So when you find a truly retro board, it's something a bit special. It's not the best board that's ever been built. The point is that the history behind it gives it that extra bit that a new board doesn't have. It's not just a board that someone's shaped. Last week, it's a board that someone shaped at the same year that I was born, so it's got so much history behind it, and that shows in the dings and the, the scrapes and the, the, you know, the, the scars that it's got. It takes a lot of time, effort and patience to get it back to anywhere near what it might have been. The most exciting part of the whole process is obviously when you finished it and getting the board on the roof ready to go because it's going to be used and you know, who knows when the last time it was used. After spending so much time working on the board, you know, healing all the scars that it's had, it's, it's so satisfying to be in the position to where you can take it down to the beach. Because a board like that doesn't belong in the garage, it's not, that's not what it's meant for. It's, its purpose is to be in the sea being surfed. When you get down to the beach, the actual preparing the board to go into the water is almost as, as important as the actual repairing of it itself. Otherwise, that moment of getting into the water isn't going to be as exciting as, as it could have been. You spent all that time and all that energy on doing something and then it all comes down to that one moment. And the board's reborn. And suddenly you, you flash back and you kind of feel like how that person must have felt when they paddled it out for the first time. You're just starting another page and a new chapter of the, the long history of a board. And long may it continue.